welcome back to the next video in Atlantic Wall. Um, this one will not be probably a particularly long video because we're going to finish up the uh, Allied uh, Airborne Combat and then uh, the German turn, some movement in combat. I'm not going to go into all the detail of the combat. We've already done that before, so I'm just going to show you relatively quickly uh, some of the combats that occurred, what all happened, and uh, we'll do the movement in the combat. And then after that, then we're going to get on to the beach sec uh, section, the airborne mod or the beach module. So looking forward to that. I'm already on the uh, night turn, actually, for June 6th. Uh, I've been trying to find some time to do that. I haven't had any. I wanted to play tonight, but I needed to also uh, get some more files up because the further out I get, the less I remember of what happened. But uh, things are getting pretty dicey uh, in some areas. It's been a lot of fun. And I've been reading a couple different books on Omaha. I've mentioned uh, Omaha and the whole D-Day landings. And it's it's pretty crazy to see how historically close my Omaha beach is. Um, and I don't want to give any spoilers, but it's been a it's been quite the uh, quite the uh, disaster not disaster but it's been a tough fight. So let's get right into it here, uh, so we can finish this up and get onto the beach landings. I'm not I don't want to hurry through it, but like I said. Uh, how I'm kind of doing this for those of you jumping in, if you want a detailed version of this, go find the first video on the airborne movement and combat phases, the first movement, first combat phases. You can go find that, and I step through how you do it, and then uh, that'll give you a step-by-step. -step. And if you've got any questions, by all means, go ahead and ask them. I can answer them. There's a Facebook page that's wonderful with lots of dudes on there that know what they're talking about, so you can get on there if you want. Uh, Consim World, uh, I you know I kind of do the Facebook thing. I know there's some way better forms out there and stuff. I just don't spend a lot of time on them. I just don't have the time. I'd like to, but I kind of just do what's easy and convenient. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rolling here. So we got the combats. We're going to start over here at the sixth airborne. I'm using my little spade, remember, kind of as a pointer because if you jump across the map. As soon as you move a unit, it'll certainly jump over there, but then you have to figure out which mo unit moved and from where. So it's not ideal. Like it doesn't give you a, it doesn't give you a pre-move. Oh, sorry, that's my phone. Uh, someone trying to get a hold of me on there. But anyway, um, so I like to use this as a pointer because then it gets us over there before we start actually moving stuff. I'm going to do that more and more because as the map fills up, it gets really difficult. Uh, so anywho, so we got this unit right here. The sixth airborne wants to attack. I'm like I said, I'm not going to go through all of the stuff, but we basically ended up, uh, it was a 15 to 12 in favors of the allies. So the Germans have to retreat. There's a strong point there. So that's destroyed and the airborne start to spread out a little bit and start cleaning up some of these German units. Now we got another one down over here. We're going to do here. <clears throat> the Allies have eight, the Germans only have two, and plus three for a PR, so five. So it's eight to five. Remember, you roll the dice. It's 16 to eight, so it's more than the PR, so it's eliminated. And uh, again, remember, you can go back to all that stuff. Um, and I accidentally deleted the last German who should have retreated, so I'll fix that. So put him back over there, and he's going to retreat there. And this one gets eliminated, so... All right, so we're just going to kind of blow through these a little bit, um, just showing you what's happening. Uh, oh, here, this wasn't so great for the airborne, uh, my airborne attack. So this one, we had a, a decent little attack here. We had 8 to 6, ends up being 7-11, so they ended up wiping that guy out. Over here was kind of the disaster, right? So we're trying to push on Carentan. We roll a big stinky three for the attacker. Remember, attacker's always first for me. That ends up being a allies retreat. Um, so I looked up the rules because I was thinking about breaking up the retreat, but you cannot, so they all have to retreat back to there. And they retreat that direction because of the HQ. Uh, okay. And I think that's it. So we go on to German movement. <coughs> so airborne's doing okay. If we look at this, you know, we're 
we're guarding some bridges here. Uh, we got to guard this bridge a little bit, a little bit more. We we haven't consolidated anything yet. We got this bridge here. We knocked out. I'm basically trying to keep a corridor that I can run through here, right? Because uh, I think it's Saint Savor, Saint Savor le Vicomte, however you say that. That's obviously a big juncture we got to take because we have this ugly river flooded swampy area here that complicates things quite a bit but the goal is to try to cut off Carentan, right so we got to get to port mail right there if we can do that life is good now that's the obvious easy route uh, but there is other options we can come up north here but you know it becomes more and more we can go down south it gets a little harder but anyway so that's the goal there Let's get on to the German movement, though. This will be a really short video tonight. The next one is the uh, amphibious. I might even load that up just to show. Ah, I won't do that. <clears throat> so the German player may move any unit activated in the first German movement segment. The German side may activate two additional units that are within six hexes of a Commonwealth unit and two units that are within six hexes of a U.S. unit. So I'm going to go ahead and activate some here. These guys will activate here. I just should use my pointer. You can see where that doesn't work great. This guy right here is going to activate. Activated units may move up to their full printed movement allowance. However, when entering a hex within three hexes of an allied unit, multiply all movement costs by two. So that does a really good job of, of uh, simulating that there's scattered airborne groups out there. They might run into little little groups here and there they might be moving a little more cautious because they don't know how many enemies are out there so i really like that so here we are we're going to get these guys up here we're going to get them right up here into this defensive terrain and and try to control this road right so we can keep this open and, and maybe put a little pressure i mean these guys aren't that strong but look at the pr ratings are nine versus four you know defensive nine versus four or an offensive nine versus a five so we don't want to get too, you're not attacking a lot with a guy with a PR of four. He's kind of a placeholder, right? And we got these guys here. We'll get them moved. Uh, I decided to leave him there. Bring up some 21st Panzer that was down here. That was already activated. There's the drop zone. We're going to want to control that at the end of the turn so we can destroy it. And then I'm moving this guy up here, and I won't tell you what I'm doing with that yet, but uh, that's an interesting thing. We got this uh, Fallschirmjäger unit here with the other 91st. This is a pretty robust little spot for the Germans. That's a hard, a hard crack right now with no support, no armor, nothing like that. And we're still regrouping, so that makes for an interesting game. And uh, we're moving up other guys that are moving, so you know they can't move as far because they got to worry about being within three hexes. But they're starting to. We're starting to crowd the airborne just a little bit. We're going to pull these guys back down here into a more defensive position. Um, again, we've had some requests to maybe zoom in a little bit more. I think it tends to get a little blurry, but um, maybe it'll help you read these numbers, and then I'll zoom back out. So take a look at those. So the Germans are getting a pretty good defensive line here. we got a full battalion with anti-tank company attached to it and we have an engineer company and an infantry company with this little stream here in the uh, crummy uh, flooded uh, marshland area all right we're going to continue moving up some Fallschirmjäger this is south of the line here and they're going to bring up the uh, they brought up that armor unit just you know so they can be together you don't want these armor units to be caught out by themselves if you're in certain kinds of terrain and you get caught out by yourself, you are uh, basically uh, going to get in trouble because you don't have any infantry support. You can get ambushed and there's some penalties for you, so don't do that. Uh, we'll keep moving these guys. We want to try to control these roads. We don't have a lot of forces here yet. We need guys to start waking up, start moving. So we want to control these roads. We want to at least make them fight for every inch, not just let them move their way up however they want. That's my strategy anyway. We move down here because we're thinking, yeah, we're going to maybe try to get that little isolated uh, fog of war unit. We got an engineer unit up here that gets to move, so he he's coming down. Uh, 
Looks like we got an OS Battalion here, a crummy East Front Battalion, and another company. So they're kind of hanging together. All right, German combat. This is the second German combat. So again, I'm not going to go through every combat, uh, all the rules and details, but we're going to do one right here. So we end up doing that one, and it is a 12 to 3 Germans retreat. So every, again, attacker rolls first. So you can see what that crummy 3 did versus a 9, and they barely lost, but it means they got to retreat away. So they have to retreat towards their HQ is the priority. Priority is any open hex, so he could have retreated to any of these three. The second priority is if any of those are closer to the HQ, well, his HQ is all the way over here in St. whatever, Savor le, Com le Comte, however you say it. Sorry for butchering that. Okay, so uh, we got one right here we're going to try. I, You know, I tried with the Germans after some of these attacks. Because I'm thinking, okay, you want to nail these guys before they start consolidating. Because once they consolidate, you're toast. Right? So even if I take some damage uh, and have a chance at damaging them, this is going to be the best odds they have, I think, to do any damage. So that's why I'm doing these. They might not. It's like this is a 7 to 8, right? So it's not the best. But, you know, right here, I get lucky. I get a 12 to 8. Now, <coughs> excuse me, that only ends up being a retreat. But you never know if you get really lucky and you roll a 9 and they roll a 0 or an 8 or a 0 and it's enough to kill them. That's a huge loss for the, for the Allies. Sorry, a little bit of a frog in my throat. Sorry. All right. So we'll go ahead and advance. Um, here we got another one. It's 6 to 7. But, you know, we got a lot of Fog of War units there. If we get lucky, we could do some damage. So... We don't. We have to retreat. That's fine. And then we got this one right here. 17 to 12. We're excited. We get a 5 and a 0. 22 to 12. That is a 10. So the Airborne will lose a step and retreat. Well, that was a bummer because I had a full-scale battalion on, or a two-step battalion on there. Now, if you look at him, he's down to a step loss. That means if the 501st, 1st Battalion loses one more step, they're off the board. And that's not good for them because you have to rebuild that battalion, which is a little more costly than starting from scratch. Now, I looked up the rules because they ended up, they get this huge stack right here, right, of retreating. And based on the HQ and all that stuff, that's where they go. They have to un get unstacked. I was thinking of a different word that you might hear in the military. They got to unstack themselves. <laughs> There's another word similar to that. So they got to undo that, and they'll have to do that on their turn. So these guys are kind of pushing and shoving. I don't know if that's a great plan for me to move in there, but anything I can do to hold this up. Uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine. I was thinking Carentan was taken earlier. I'm fairly new to World War II. I mean, I've been playing war games on it for quite a while, but I've really been getting more into the history of it, not just the general history, but more specific battle stuff. And I guess, you know, I kind of am a, uh, a self-made victim of Band of Brothers where I watch that. And you just assume, oh, that's like the next day or something or the same morning. Uh, Karen Tan was, you know, was like D plus six or seven, maybe eight before they took Karen Tan's or seven, I think it was. So, you know, I'm in a rush to do this and it's like, well, they didn't even take it till then. But we have we have an outlet here, an outlet a bridge here, a bridge here and a. I guess that would be a bridge. I don't know how that's a bridge. Maybe it's a Ford. I'd have to look. I don't see many Fords in this game. So, but I mean, you know, there's some routes to attack. And then again, you have more bridges over more rivers. Coming this way is not going to be great because they have a full battalion here that's eventually going to wake up. But anyway, kind of getting sidetracked. Um, I was all excited about doing the airborne or the amphibious modules because it's one of my favorite parts of the game. Uh, I know that's not the same for a lot of people. I know a lot of people would like to have a December 7th start. Uh, my suggestion for that is uh, do yourself a favor. Play the December 7th uh, or the December 6th landing. Do that like, I don't know, three times. Record all the positions at the end if you want. And then uh, do a die roll. One or two, it's this one. Three or four, it's this. You know, do a low, medium, high roll. And you get one of those three if you want, or just make it the same every time. 
but it's not too hard to come up with your own December seventh start if you want to just, you know, play it once and go with that every time. I like to do averages, you know, because if you play it once and do really well, that's always going to make it a little tougher for the Germans. And if you play it once and do really crappy, it's going to make it a little harder for the Allies. But anyway, it is what it is. So off to the sixth airborne. We got this nice juicy stack here, the twenty first Panzer. So they're going to attack. They get a 12 to 13. We get an 8 out of the gate against the 2 for the Airborne. So it's only a retreat, but we're crowding them. And the Germans would love to get this bridge right here. They would love to open that up and connect with these fellers. I can't wait to show you what happens here. So I had a great plan with this guy. And uh, we'll, we'll show you what happens later. But anyway, uh, that's going to be it. That's going to be the end of that file. The next file, which I'll probably do this weekend, Maybe tomorrow. I've been uh, working with a trainer, so I do that three nights a week, and I'm pretty tired after that because uh, I'm a fairly big dude, and I am down about 57 pounds at this point. So uh, kind of excited about that, but i got a long way to go. So that's been slowing me down on videos because I get at home at night, and I just beat. And I would love to do a video, but, you know, when you're sitting there just whooped, it, it's not fun. So, and I don't want to keep, and, I, and I'd and i love to play too, but then it's like, oh, I play and then, you know, I get way ahead and it gets hard to remember everything that happened. So I want to try to get caught up because if you look at where I'm at here, let's see how good of a job did I do here? Uh, well, oh, here it is. Okay. So these are all the files I've done, right? So I, this is an old file I kept for reference. It was, uh, I think it's the seventh a.m. turn, but I uh, just finished the June 6th night turn on Omaha, because Omaha is the only beach that wasn't cleared. So you can see I have all these files. Now, we're not going to go through every step of these files, because that would take a gazillion years to talk during every one of them, because I'm basically banging out like, okay, this is a, you know, fire rating a six and then here's the modifiers plus two roll this it's an a a plus or minus two roll that here's here's the four different things and we'll get into all that and how we do it it's fairly simple but it's very repetitive i'm not going to walk through one of those i'm going to show you the first few examples of combat i'll show some more on omaha because that's the more complex map uh and then we'll get into that but it, it'll be fun trust me so this is what we're going to do next time is the, uh, uh, oh, that's the one I'm doing right now, file eight. So beach landings, file nine is where we're going to go next time. So that's where I got them saved and kept for right now. Uh, I'd highly recommend, too, if you're playing with Vassal, you do log files. So if you ever mess anything up, it's not that hard to go back. I won't go back and redo a bunch of stuff if I find out I've been playing something wrong. For those of you that watch my regular videos, you'll know that, it's not a big deal to miss little things. Don't let that ruin the experience for you. Uh, you want to do it as best you can, and you want to be as accurate as you can, but you're going to find a lot of times when you go back, if you look at any of my other videos, especially with Goss, you go back and look. Look at my Walk to Ryan where I correct stuff. You look at all the different modifiers, and sometimes it's still the same result. Or it didn't matter, right, because you rolled whatever, and it it is the same. So don't let that ruin it for you. Don't let that stop you. I know a lot of people look at Goss. They think it's a big, scary system with too much detail. It's a big rule book, but they cover every little detail. But it's that it's that rule of, let's see if I can say this right, you use 10% of the rules 90% of the time, right? So <clears throat> you don't have to understand all 100% of the rules because you're going to do the basic stuff over and over and over. Once you do that a few times, it's a, it's it's fairly you know, straightforward. And again, we'll keep covering that. There's tons of videos. There's a table, Tabletop's Edge, uh, Wise Guy, uh, Monster on my table. I hope I got all those right. Those are three that I like to watch and look at what they're doing. Uh, there's other people on Facebook that are, I can't remember. I apologize. I don't know your name yet. There's a guy that's doing some turn by, that might be Monster on my table, but I don't know if that's him or not. But there's a guy that's doing like, without his voice, but he's got graphics and he takes stills and he's using the actual pieces and board, which are always fun, right? Because we all like the pieces on the board. I do this for convenience because I can do multiple games and I can leave it set up, but there is tons of resources out there for you. So don't let that stop you. Get out there and ask questions. There's no dumb question. If anyone, I'll be the first guy. If somebody jumps down your throat and starts treating you like a, 
an idiot, I'm the first guy to jump on there and say, well, back it off, dude. Because I see that on different groups, and I don't get that. I don't see it on Goss, on the Facebook Goss page. I don't see that. But there are other groups I'm on where someone will ask a question, and they totally make them look, feel like an idiot. And then you're like, geez, I wonder why hardly anyone gets into our hobby because, you know, we act like elitists. So, you know, I'm the first guy to jump in on somebody's uh, somebody's side, sometimes a little aggressive, but that's the way it is, right? So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll get to the beach landings next. And if you got any questions or comments, fire them off. Thanks.